benefit of the AI revolution could come in the form of drug discovery. We've certainly heard that oftentimes, and it is, according to a new note from Jeffries as well, which says the technology could lead to faster development, higher success rates, and it could lower costs. Michael Yee, Jeffries Senior Biotech Analyst, joins us now. Michael, it has been uh, offset of late of one of the benefits of generative AI as it continues to mature. You know, what are we talking about in terms of what you see as the real benefits to the industry and over what time period? Well, good to be here. Uh, you're right. It has been talked about as one of the biggest potential beneficiaries of generative AI. Jensen Huang is out there talking about that. They've got partnerships out there with biotech companies. And we know that biotech is a billion dollars to find a drug in up to 10 years to get a drug to market, and 90% of drugs fail. So we think that based on analysis and some of the technologies these companies are doing, you could cut the drug time by years and cut the probabilities uh, uh, significantly, even half, uh, to get drugs to market. And that could save billions of dollars and increase the odds of success and return on investment for companies and investors. Yeah, over, and what time period? I mean, obviously, we're still in the early stages in terms of this technology itself, and certainly its adoption amongst companies that are developing yeah. drugs. What are you seeing on the ground right now? Well, we've spoken with many of the big companies like Amgen, Novartis, many of the big biopharmaceutical companies that are talking about this. Uh, you know, we have data about how many times they mentioned this, and you're correct, it is very early stage. And we're out there saying five years from now, we think we'll see tremendous progress in drugs that are in the clinic uh, from test tubes today uh, that were basically done using generative AI. So we think we're five years out there, but some of the big companies like Amgen particularly are talking about how they're integrating this into the early stages of discovery. So we can cut a 10-year process, maybe down to seven or eight years. Right. Obviously, a much greater return for your investment conceivably. You know, Correct. nearer term, though, Michael, what I'm hearing from some who invest or did invest in early stage biotech is concern at the FDA. I think it's Vinay Prasad, the gentleman yeah. who oversees the Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research. The idea that they may actually make it tougher to get approvals for cancer drugs. Uh, you know, is that a near term concern versus this longer term potential benefit from AI? We think in the short to medium term, you're correct. Uh, AI is a long-term thing, which I'll get to in a second. But in the short to medium term, we're obviously going under challenges as it relates to RFK, Marty McCary, and Vinay Prasad. The good news is that we think a lot of the stocks and a lot of the sector, if you pull up the XBI, has sold off tremendously. A lot of this has been talked about. Even things about vaccines, you saw the vaccine stocks rally yesterday, uh, even though they pulled it from the guidelines, because so much of the negative news has been priced in. Uh, Marty McCary has been out talking about how they want to push things forward, not only with rare diseases, but including with eventual integration of AI and some of the preclinical stuff that's been talked about. And so we do think a lot of the negativity has been priced in, and we do see the stocks moving up over the course of the year as investors digest what was negative headlines and probably not going to be so bad. So pay attention to what Marty McCary is saying. I think he's going to be out on listening tours with biopharmaceutical companies. I think they've talked about that. I think they'll be more on the circuit talking with the investors. We might even have them at the Jeffries Healthcare Conference. We'll see. And I think that overall, a lot of the negative has been priced in. So we're actually optimistic for the rest of the year. Okay, and finally, you know, our viewers do like to hear some names. So, you know, in terms yeah. of those companies that are going to enable the big uh, biotech and or pharmaceutical companies to develop things more quickly, are there names? Are there companies that are actually trying to yeah. use the AI right now? We think there's three ways to play it. In the big pharmaceutical area, we think Amgen is a player that has been specifically talking about the integration of it. We think Schrodinger is a software company that we think is going to benefit from increased spending on the R&D side. And then in the picks and the tools and the shovel side, Illumina and Danaher are also mentioned in the report as some of the areas where they're trying to integrate that into precision medicine and human diagnostic testing. So three ways to play that angle. Uh, again, a long-term angle, but this is something that's definitely a tailwind. And again, I repeat, the F FDA has been commenting more about trying to get more involved in this. And so at least they're acknowledging this. And I think there is a tailwind there to be had. All right. Well, we'll be checking in along the way as well, Michael. Uh, thank you. Good Michael stuff. Yee.